Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say welcome. And I want to just tell you that God is a good God. Amen. Got my family here. Praise the Lord, some of them. It's exciting. I'm glad that they're here. Praise the Lord. i got to turn my phone volume down. Hallelujah. There we go. Uh, turn with me to Ephesians 6. We'll pray. Verse, chapter 10, verse, verse 10. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. And I thank you that, Father, that you are in charge and that you are in charge of our lives. And I give you praise for that, Lord. And you've also given us authority. And I give you praise for that, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, and I just ask you to minister to every heart. Minister to us, Father, in Jesus' name. Give us enlightenment of your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 6, and I want to start in verse 10. And it says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may, able, may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having undone all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all. For me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel." which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Very important. Um, when it comes to uh, our authority, um, a lot of times, and I'll just talk about a little bit of this, but um, it's very easy to uh, let your response come from your natural feelings, your emotions, the thoughts that are coming at you. Amen. All right. And so what I want you to understand is that the enemy, the whole purpose of him, what he's trying to get you to do, is he's trying to get you to say something out of your mouth that contradicts God's word. That's, that's his goal. Because he's trying to steal from you the word. And if you can use self-control, this Bible says we have self-control, you can control those emotions, you can control the thoughts, because, well, we'll just go there real quick. And then I'm going to go back here real quick. I want to go to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I don't know, but whenever I'm in a battle, I'm telling you what, your emotions just take off sometimes. I mean, it's like, you know, you're just like, you know, you have fear, whatever, anger, sadness. But if you can get to where you can control your first response, you might win this battle. You know, Andrew talks about, <laughs> I just love this, about, you know, his, one guy, he was a little boy come running in. He said, come and pray for my dad, come and pray for my dad. And he ran over there, you know. Anyway, the guy died and he didn't know it. 
and then he prayed for him. The guy came back to life, all right? So sometimes it's better not having all that information, you know what I mean? Because you may not act right if you had all that information. Well, and that's why, you know, we need to focus in on what God's Word says, and that's all the information that you really need. And if you're looking at it naturally, your situations or whatever it is, I'm telling you, your body will tell you lies. It will speak to you, and it'll, it'll say, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, you may be. But you got to say no. You got, it's like taking yourself by the collar and say, no, I'm healed. The Word of God says I'm healed, and so I'm going to act healed, and I'm going to act healed all day long. And it may not manifest that day, but you know what you do? You get up the next day, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you keep doing it. You, you, you push this thing. That is called resistance. You know, I, I want to show you this. Um, 1 Peter 4. I love this. I love this. this. This is the best definition I can ever give anybody. And I just, I'm like, man, that's good. Beloved, this is verse 12. 1 Peter 4. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Now, I'm going to stop there. I just want to ask you a question. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial. How many of you know Satan is going to try you? He is going to come at you. He wants the word because he knows that if the word gets in your heart, it can produce a miracle, it can meet your needs, once you start walking in the blessing of that revelation, then you become where you start walking in blessing and not miracle. Miracle meets the need for the moment, but the blessing is, is when you get that revelation about that situation or about that circumstance, and then you start walking in the blessing and you keep reminding your, yourself and him of what the Word says. You know, you're walking in it. You have understanding. You have revelation of it. Amen. So you are going to have a trial. It, it happens. It's what it is. It's part of being a Christian. So welcome to the trial club. Praise the Lord. You know, but really what's on trial is not you. It's the word that's on trial. And you, we know what happened in that trial. Jesus fully persuaded the enemy that he is defeated. You know, sometimes I think we make the devil out bigger than what he really is. I was telling Sandy, and I don't know, I'm not going to go here, but I will. It was just what it did for me, another person's insight of the enemy. What it did for me is it made me understand really how small he really is. And that helps me, understanding my enemy. Because I think sometimes we give him more credit than what's there. And, and so I want to I just show you this. I just like this illustration. Okay. So, and this is not in, this is just a, a thought. Just, I'll just play along with it just for a moment. All right. So, Satan convinces Adam and Eve to give them the authority that they had. Okay? He deceived them. He wanted their authority because their authority was unconditional. Now, he's powerful in the sense of being an angel, an angelic, all right? But he wanted, but his, that authority that he had was conditional. You know, in Hebrews, talks about ministering spirits are sent to and fro, right? Helping God do his work, okay? So he wanted their authority, all right? So he took deceived them and got, now he has their authority. The authority of what a man has in the earth. Okay? When Jesus comes, he strips him of his angelic authority and the other authority. He still has to have a body. He has to use a human being in order to operate in the earth. All right? But whenever he comes at us, He's only coming us at us in man's authority that was given. Not angelic. 
that blessed me because I'm thinking this guy's powerful. He's not powerful because he has this angelic ability. Well, I want you to know that he's not powerful. He is defeated. And so our job is to submit to God and our job is to resist. Now, what does resist look like? What, I'll, I'll just give you my example. Let me read on because I want to show you what suffering is. Amen? But rejoice to the extent, this is verse 13, but rejoice to the extent that you may partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Oh boy. What does it mean to suffer? What's that look like? I mean, I've heard all kinds of sermons about it. You know, God put cancer on somebody to, you know, teach him a lesson. and I mean, stuff like that. Seriously. You know, that sickness, that's from God. Then why go to the doctor? You know, you're in God's perfect will because now you're sick. You know, I mean, come on. That, isn't that foolish? This is what suffering looks like. Are you ready? Suffering, this is Doug Basie definition. Suffering equals standing on God's promise, controlling your emotions, not letting your thoughts and your mouth get you in trouble. That's suffering. That is taking, I mean, you're getting punched by the enemy. He's throwing those thoughts. He's throwing all this trash at you. And he's coming at you with everything that he's got. And he's sitting there and he's just onslaught. And you stand there and you do not let your thoughts go to what he wants you to think. You don't let your mouth speak what he wants you to speak. You know, you bite your tongue and make it bleed if you have to bite it so hard, you know. But you do not say what he wants you to say. You do not speak, you know, Matthew, let's go there real quick. I'll just show you that. Matthew, let me find it, 631. This is really good. Matthew 6, 31 says, Therefore, do not worry, saying. In the King James, it says, Therefore, take no thought, saying. Take no thought, saying. Take no thought, saying. He is trying to get you to talk doubt and unbelief. He's trying to paint an image on your mind, on your imagination that is against God's word. And you have to take those thoughts captive. You have to take the words that are spoken against your situation and say that is not what God's word says. It's like this. You can take a fact and you can say the fact. That's fine. I'm not feeling well today. However, God's word says I'm healed by the stripes that were laid upon Jesus and I choose to believe what his word says. Nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up. I'm not trying to beat you up if you're feeling beat up. I'm just trying to understand when you're fighting how to fight. You know, you need to understand it. Why are you saying that, Doug? Because for 15 years I put up with a demon. I didn't realize it was a demon. I thought it was just people didn't like me about this at work in this situation. And for 15 years I put up with this situation that just would come at me, come at me. And I'm just like, man, what is the deal? And I didn't say anything, didn't do anything, didn't pray, nothing. And then I started reading and understanding something from a teacher, Andrew. That's a devil. <laughs> Duh. The light went on. Hallelujah. I spoke over that situation. It was gone. And I hadn't been put up with that anymore. I'm like, praise God, that was a devil. And I didn't realize it. You're saying, well, Doug, I mean, how dumb are you? Sometimes. You know, the light's not on. I'm a pretty passive person. I, I, I'm a patient man. Almost to a fault. You're walking home, Jordan Basie. Don't look at the situation in the natural realm. 
I know it's hard. I used to be afraid. I had a great fear of getting up in front of people and singing. Believe it or not, it was like, oh my gosh. And the Lord said, face that. What? Face it. Get up there. Oh, God, no. There's no. No, get up there. Do it. Oh, Lord Jesus. There, no, do it. Oh, my gosh, God. So I'm standing there. My brother-in-law, this way tells me, close your eyes, Doug. Really? Yeah. Hey, that works pretty good. <laughs> I can't see anybody. Because I'm thinking, these people don't like me. They want me to fail and all that. And that's, that's a false. That's a lie from the enemy. But, I mean, that goes through your head. Because you think all these people, they want to see you fail. They want to see you not hit the note perfectly or whatever. Come on. I'm preaching better than you're hearing. I mean it. And I get that. And that's just the enemy telling people lies. It's like, and he just sits there and just throws that, throws it. That's why you got to have that full armor. I mean, don't take, don't go home without it. You know, keep that thing on. You know, because those fiery darts, I mean, he's throwing them. Zip, zip. That's what that shield's for. It's protection. It stops those things, those thoughts. But you have something you have to do. Anytime, and I, I mean this. Have you ever watched TV? I, I, I don't do this. I try to watch good programming. No, I'm kidding. I'm just teasing you on that. But have you ever yelled at the TV? Like, what are you talking about? You, I've seen people do this. I'm like, really? But they're upset because this guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But you know what? In a sense, they're countering, if they're doing it biblically, they're countering what they're hearing from the television set. Amen. You know, I, I sit there and I think about that thinking, I don't do that. I should do that sometimes. But I don't, but I'm getting better. I'm learning. Praise the Lord. That's good. Amen. I can put up with a demon for 15 years. Come on, man. I mean, give me a break. Not realizing. And man, I spoke the word. He left. He was like, I'm out of here. Why? Because I have authority. I have his name. I have his word. I have his promise. Sometimes I think, and I say this again and again and again, I want you to realize this. It's not a God problem. And it never will be a God problem. It's a you problem. And I, so take personal responsibility. If things aren't working out right, it's not God, it's me. It's okay. Because what's so great is he can fix you. He can touch your heart, change that area, like me, praise God, and fix it. He's a great at it. And he does it. It's so great how he does it. I mean, it's so gentle, kind sometimes. Sometimes it's a brick. Boom, that's the devil? Yeah, son. What are you doing putting up with that? Not looking at the situation. Romans 6. Romans 6. Verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You know, I think about, and you, you watch in the Bible, you can, you can resist the devil with your body. You know, uh, Joseph, he ran... Potiphar's wife that's using your body that's making your body hey I ain't doing this I'm out of here run flee temptation you know so whatever you yield yourself to guess what you're going to reap from it 
And it's just, I mean, and it's, I love God because it's either, I, I just love this about him. You're either righteous or doing righteous stuff or you're walking in sin, period. There's no in between. I love that. That's good. That sets it straight real easy. Here's what I'm getting at. If you're not pursuing and going after him with your, everything you got, I mean, you're running this race, and you're doing that like a lot, you're walking in the Spirit. And if you ever stop, guess what? You've just yielded yourself over to this other side. You've yielded to the force. No, I'm kidding. I just watched Star Wars the other day. I loved it. The new one, oh my gosh, I love it. I've watched them all. I was actually, I believe, I'm just going to say that, I was actually, I think it was the first cans and to see the very first when I was out in California when it first came out. And <laughs> Anyway, I won't go there, but I love it. I enjoyed it. Praise the Lord. But, so I want to tell you this. So when you're in this battle and you're fighting, whatever situation it is, don't yield. Submit to God. Yield to Him. Yield to his word. Focus in on it. Run to it every time. And tell your emotions to shut up. Tell those thoughts, get out of here. You know? Because that's not who you are. That's not who you're created to be. Linda had me uh, listen to this sermon, and it was very good. It was by Bill Winston. I loved it. But he was talking about Esther. And we've been teaching righteousness. We had a Bible study going on about righteousness. And, and Esther put on her robe. And this is very important that you understand this. But she put on her this, the, the, the palace robe or whatever it was. And then she went before the king. And she's not supposed to do that. And he sees her and he tells her, come in. And she comes in, kneels, and he lets touch scepter, whatever. And he says, I'll give you half of my kingdom. All right? And what Bill was talking about, he said, that robe is like the robe of righteousness. And, and what I'm getting at is the enemy wants to convince you that you're not good enough, you haven't performed enough, or whatever else is the reason that God won't answer your prayer or he won't fix this situation or whatever. And it all comes down to I understand my standing with my father of who I am in relationship to him. I am a son. I am a daughter. And I have that relationship. And what I'm getting at is, is that then you know that when you pray and you ask according to his word, you get what you receive by believing it. Period. And then you act like you have it. I want to ask everybody a question. If, how many of you could use a billion dollars, praise God? Anybody out there? What would you act like if somebody walked in and said, I want to give you a billion, you a billion, you? How would you, what would you act like? Even though you don't have it yet, what would you act like if you have a situation that you need something, how would you act? See where I'm coming at? I say act normal. What's normal? Praise God, I love Jesus, hallelujah. I'm biting my tongue because I mean, you, so I'm getting at. You, you act like nothing's bothering you, praise the Lord, even though those circumstances are terrible and all this stuff's going on, praise God. No, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. I'm a child of the Most High. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm an heir of God. His promises to me are yes and amen. Not, well, maybe. It's never that. You know, it says in the Word, and I love this. It says he could do very few miracles. I just love this scripture. He could do very few miracles except a few because of their unbelief. He showed me the four soils. And he said, that's you. And I'm like, you're right. 
I got three of them. No, I have four. And I'm getting rid of three. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to see fruit. I'm going to see stuff happen in my life. I'm going to just keep, yeah, pull it out, put him in, put it out, put him in. All the cares of this world, the hardness of heart, I'm going to believe him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to put all I have toward him. Period. I made up my mind. Am I perfect at it? No. But you know what? He loves me. And he loves you. And he wants to see you successful. But you have to fight. You have to. You got to go in the battle. Praise the Lord. It's okay. It's all good. It's great to fight. Just don't wait 15 years like I did. Praise the Lord. Finding out something. Amen. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Turn with me to Psalms. I love this one. Psalms 141.3. Psalm. This is a great thing to pray over yourself. Praise the Lord. Psalms 1. It says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Man, Sally used to say she used to have, <laughs> uh, I love her. She used to have what she called the tape ministry, and she was ministering to women, and the women were trying to either get their husbands saved or whatever, and she, she'd say, well, you need just masking tape on your mouth. And then some of them needed the duct tape. I mean, they needed to keep their mouth shut. And she called it the tape ministry. I'm just kidding. She wouldn't make people wear it. But, you know, the whole point was, was that, you know what? That mouth can get you in a lot of trouble, especially when you have emotions involved and a bad circumstance. You know, circumstances are subject to change. You know what we're dealing with out here? It's subject to change because God's word is true. Let me ask you a question. What's the worst thing that can happen to anybody over this virus for you? You go to heaven, okay? So that perspective of it, praise God. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Now, granted, I don't want to go right now. I got things I want to do. I'll see my grandbaby grow up, all that stuff and all, you know, that's all good. But what I'm getting at is, is that that's how we have to think. We need to think like that. Think heavenly not earthly, not of this earth, not natural. I know we get hit with stuff and all that, and it's, it's okay. You know, uh, James 3.16, we'll go there. This is a good scripture. They're all good, praise the Lord. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. What usually happens to a person when there's strife or whatever, what's going on is you have a person that's seeking self or selfishness, being selfish. It's all about me. And I want you to know that if that's how you are, you need to change that. You need to get that fixed because that's not how it works. You need to allow God to fix that. It helps you mature in that. And, you know, I know it, it's... I'll give you an example. This was hard for me. I like using myself because it's better than using other people because I'm, I'm kidding, but... Um, I, when I was a little kid growing up in, in grade school, I was super fast. And I mean, like, real fast, all right? Like, I ran like a 33.1220 as a third grader, fast. I could outrun high schoolers in the first 20 yards. I'd be out there in front of them. I was just quick as lightning, kind of like Jordan, Brett. They're pretty quick, but anyway... So anyway, so I'm sitting here, and I, I used to be pretty fast. Well, then, 
you know, you're a pretty good, fast guy, you know. Well, that's a little pawn. I did some AAU, and I found out there's a lot of fast people out there. Well, it kind of broke my self-confidence and my all about me, and pretty soon I'm mopey and everything else, but because I was just thinking pretty selfishly until we had this relay team. And I got, to, I got to be the last runner, so that's just tell you. However, I wasn't the fastest on that relay team. The very first runner was our fastest runner. But they let me run the fourth leg. And it was because I learned that lesson. And it was hard. It's tough. It's tough on you when you start learning how selfish you are. Now, I know none of you are, praise God. You guys got this down pat. But I wanted to, want you to know that where that goes on, it's not a good thing. It's full of evil. But verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. I love that. Willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen? Let's pray. i got to be done. Father, I just thank you that, Lord God, you are so good to us, and that, Father, that you love each one of us, Father, and I just ask that you just minister to the hearts of your people, that you enlighten them, that, Lord God, you bring revelation of this fight that they are in, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord.